Okay, if you get asked a duress of threats essay question in the exam, there are a lot of evaluation points that you can talk about, which is good. So first of all, the burden of proof is correct. It follows Article 6 of the European Convention on Human Rights that the defendant is entitled to a fair trial. So they do not have to prove anything. The burden is on the prosecution. Secondly, there are lots of conditions for the defence to be um, successful. So this is good because it restricts the use of the defence um, and the defence won't be abused because it does result in a full acquittal. So we actually don't want too many people using the defence because if they can avoid committing a crime, then they must do so. The issue of others. So with self-defence, and you can compare duress with self-defence, um, self-defence is available to you or anybody else that you are protecting. However, duress of threats is not available to all third parties. It's actually quite restricted. It is only available to people close to you. And nobody has ever established how close that actually has to be. Um, and you know, morally, you might want to act to protect a stranger, but the defence will not be available to you. The next issue is the threat has to be one of physical harm. Um, mental harm is not included. So again, this is fairly limited because in other areas of law, we actually allow you, um, well, you are convicted of a crime um, for ABH and GBH if it's bodily harm and the bodily does include the mind. So there's inconsistency with the use of harm in dress of threats, in that it has to be physical, and how we interpret harm in other areas of law such as ABH and GBH. The next point you can talk about is with the connection. So linking back to the case of Cole, did Cole really have any other choice? He had to get the money back, otherwise his family would have been seriously injured and so would he. Um, so just because the crime wasn't nominated, this was the thing that meant he could not have the defence. Issues to do with young defendants are also um, worth mentioning. So Gotts and Wilson, Wilson was 13 years old and his violent father told him to kill his mother. And I think it's perfectly reasonable that a 13 year old would be very, very frightened of their violent father. Um, yet the law says you do not have a defence defense to murder, however susceptible you are. The issue as well that you can't threaten property or animals further limits the, the defence. Um, and actually, just going back to Gotts, Gotts, um, the attempted murder case, he did not have a defence of duress. However, had he been charged with Section 18, he would have had a full defence. And that decision was only three to two. So this shows that judges um, were a bit uneasy about it. They didn't you know, fully agree. It wasn't a unanimous decision. And they actually, in one of their um, speeches, one of the judges called for Parliament to intervene. And again, this overlaps with self-defence in that there's another inconsistency. Self-defence is available to murder, yet dress of threats is not. OK, when you're looking at the fact it has to be a threat of death or serious injury, threat to expose a secret is not enough. Now, in this day and age, you have vigilantes, vigilante justice, and if you expose that somebody had a criminal conviction or was a convicted sex offender particularly, um, that could actually indirectly lead to violence from vigilantes and yeah, what we're saying is a defence is not allowed. It has to be serious injury, but it has to be direct serious injury. So it would be interesting in the future if such a case comes up. The case of Bowen perhaps is a little bit unfair. Surely low IQ is a relevant characteristic. Today in modern society, um, drug dealers will pick somebody who's vulnerable and deal drugs out of their house. So a lot of county lines cases do involve vulnerable people being targeted, yet we are saying they will not have a defence of duress. The issue of self-induced duress is quite straightforward when the defendant belongs to a gang. However, it's less clear if the defendant has violent friends, because technically, if you have a violent friend, then you should foresee the risk of, of violence, um, which means it's self-induced duress and you do not have a defence. 
And then you could talk about as well the fact that you know, a partial defence, a proposal for reform would maybe be to have a partial defence when it comes to murder. So instead of having no defence or a full defence for self-defence, let's have a partial defence because you have killed somebody. Let's reduce it to manslaughter and give you a suspended prison sentence. So there are lots of points that you can discuss. That is not an exhaustive list. I'm sure you will think of a lot more discussion points, but those are some to get you started.